And again, the, this is just another, another portrayal, just to, so that you understand where it's surface water runoff, uh, water coming from the upper part of the landscape down through the grass waterway, through the, through the flume. Once it hits the critical uh, uh, runoff depth, uh, the, the automatic sampling starts to happen. We end up with, with uh, bottles of water in the refrigerator that we go collect and, and deliver. So, so uh, 23 farms, uh, a number of different, different uh, uh, site years worth of, worth of information. What have we started to learn about precipitation and runoff? We've got, we've got farms in, in southwest Wisconsin, SW. So there's, there's two farms in southwest Wisconsin. Uh, another farm that's in southwest Wisconsin. Southeast Wisconsin and, and Northeast. So, so these are all the farms that participated in, in the, the study. And we, we were able to, on, on average, for any given year, take a look at how much of the runoff was, was uh, uh, occurred as a result of rainfall and how much of the runoff uh, occurred uh, as a result of, of snowfall. And, and uh, no, how much, how much of the total uh, precipitation was either rain or snow. This isn't runoff yet. The, the precipitation. Uh, and what we found is that, that uh, really throughout the course of this, this time period, we really were dealing with an average weather scenario. We were, throughout the, all of those years, it wasn't like extremely wet or extre extremely dry. When you really took a look at, at uh, the, the, the average, it really it sort of bounced uh, between, between 30 and, and actually just shy of 45 inches of rain per year. And that's a, a lot more uh, than, than certain Western locations like, like, like we're at here, but that's what we're dealing with. When we take a look at the, the runoff, so we, we know that we got 30, 30 inches of rain, um, uh, and, and some of it was rainfall, some of it was, was snow, snowfall. How much of that actually left the field? And what we find out is that on average, uh, two, two and a half inches of, of that precipitation actually leaves, leaves the farm. It's only 8% of the runoff, and, and the other way to, to say that is that 92% is that, uh, of, of all of the precipitation that, that falls on the land is actually be, becomes part of the farming system. Uh, and, and, so, and so our challenge becomes uh, try, trying to figure out how do, we, how do we make sure that this 8%, uh, and, and this is average uh, uh, across the board, 8% 8, 8 of all of the precipitation that falls goes away. How do we make sure that if, if it is going to go away, that it's as clean as possible? When we divide out the, the, the calendar year and take a look at, at uh, uh, de December through, through December and, and look at uh, when is the runoff occurring, it's pretty much even. Half and half, uh, it, it sways a little bit, 46 to 54%. Uh, but, but pretty much even that, that half of, of the runoff occurs in the summer or, or on, on non-frozen soil. And truly, uh, uh, half of it does occur on frozen and snow-covered land. That's important because we do, we do end up with farmers in, in Wisconsin, and I know that the whole upper Midwest uh, has uh, a number of manure applications in the winter. It's, it's the thing that we do. Sometimes our system uh, just is built around uh, periodic daily haul. Uh, uh, other times uh, storage just as it becomes over, overrun and, and we have to scoot some manure out. There, there's times when, when manure does have to go out. And we need to be aware that, that a lot of runoff can occur uh, during this frozen and snow-covered uh, landscape scenario. I put this picture up uh, just to, to uh, just give us a double check and, and let you guys know that monitoring this, this runoff that, that occurs as, as winter transitions to spring uh, is not always as easy as, as you know, just someone saying, well, why don't you monitor it then? Uh, in in our, our locality where we get snow, uh, we have to make sure that 
if the weather forecast is portrayed that, that um, uh, it's going to warm up, we have to make sure that we, that we do some shoveling uh, on, the, on the upside uh, as, as well as the downside of, of these sites and, and just make sure that when the melt happens that, that uh, it, it can actually come, come through the system and, and get away. And so what, what is, what, now, now we're, we really are going to start to talk about winter, uh, uh, winter manure spreading. At some point in, in any given year, as soon as the, the, the temperatures drop or as soon as uh, snow starts to come, we're, we're dealing with, with uh, snow covered and frozen uh, time period. And uh, th there really are um, no risk free ways to, to, to talk about winter manure spreading. But there are some things to, to keep in mind. And that's where, where I want to take us uh, now. One of the first things uh, that, that, that we became aware of and that, that anyone needs to, to just like totally, totally own is that uh, the runoff that is uh, going to happen really truly does start way sooner than we think. Uh, the, months of, the months of January, February, and March uh, Runoff, runoff is starting to happen. And, and, and depending on how much snowpack you have and, and how uh, the temperatures uh, uh, warm up, uh, those are some really critical times. Another thing to, that, that we learned uh, was that uh, a lot of our no-till farms, the, the farms that, that um, uh, are doing a really good job of, of maintaining and, and building uh, surface, surface organic matter and, and not doing any tillage. Uh, those farms are very, very absorbent uh, when it comes to the spring, the springtime, the growing season uh, type, of, type of runoff. They, they, they totally suck it in. And so the, the amount of runoff that, that we really do measure on some of these no-till farms uh, really is uh, sometimes just the winter time period. The time period where, where the, the ground is frozen, the pores are, are, are plugged up with, with ice, uh, and, and the runoff is happening because even though there's lots of good uh, infiltration opportunities, uh, it's, it's unavailable, it's frozen. And so, and so on these, these uh, no-till farms, uh, 80, 80 and even 90 percent of the annual runoff actually happens during, during these winter months. So this is a complicated chart, but I want to I want to show you because some colored colored pieces will come out. It's it's lined up with with the calendar year here, and a a, a, a column that I want you to sort of pay attention to is this annual frequency of of runoff, uh, and and these numbers that that we were talking about in January, February, and March, uh, some of the a hundred percent of the time, we've we've never we've never been on a farm where we've monitored where there has not been some version of a runoff event in March, and so it's it, it, the and that's and that's when it happens. It's that transition uh, from from winter to spring, uh, and and the snowpack goes. Uh, that's that always has shown us uh, um, runoff runoff time periods. The other time period that's that's uh, just as important. And, and it makes sense, is the spring time period when, before the canopy, uh, crop canopy is developed. Uh, thunderstorms that, that come, not enough vegetation to absorb the, the impact, and, and, and we do end up with, with runoff. Uh, most of the runoff in, in, in these, these handfuls of months, uh, the rest of the summer as well as the, the fall, uh, end up being uh, less prone to runoff. 